Hello, are you ready to paint a watercolor painting with me today? If so, get your brushes and paints and let's go paint along. Hello again, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do a watercolor painting and it's a scene, a winter scene. It is still winter here. Um, and I have a scene from Montana, which is one of the places I particularly like to go, as you know. I hope you like the painting. We're painting on uh, Fabriano paper today. It's uh, a <clears throat> 300 pound cold press paper. And its size is about 16 by 14 approximately. I've cut it down just a little bit to help me get a bit, little better aspect ratio. And uh, I have almost no sketch on here. And uh, I'm just going to kind of play it by ear and kind of see how it goes. We'll uh, see what this turns out to be like. Quite a few brushes. Uh, I don't know how many of these I'll use, but I'm going to uh, um, use some of the bigger ones as long as I can. Uh, I have a couple of rounds couple flats and uh, some of these large uh, bristle brushes actually which are kind of unique and uh, I kind of like to, to experiment with them a little bit and uh, they give some very nice soft edges in some areas um, so I'll probably use a little bit of that today and just some of my round brushes um, it's a very pretty simple scene but it's a winter scene that I want to try to get a particular mood with so we'll uh, start with that let me go over the uh, paints for you and uh, again as I said these are my Mary blue transparent watercolors and I have neutral tint cyan blue ultramarine blue ultramarine violet crimson lake garnet lake uh, cadmium red burnt sienna raw sienna yellow ochre cupric green golden lake lemon yellow and primary yellow. Inside row I have burnt umber, sap green, Avignon orange, primary red magenta, and I have a beautiful still to grain brown. Now I don't know if I'll use all of those or how many I will use, but uh, that's the list. I have a little bit of transparent uh, red over here, red light um, from Grumbacher, and you can see the difference in the paints. If you look at the Grumbacher, you see how chipped and cracked it is from drying out. That's the difference in my Mary Blue paints. They stay a consistent sort of a soft, uh, they, they reconstitute very quickly. And uh, you can get, uh, get the, uh, the paint surface going very quickly with that. Um, I think I've got uh, everything ready here. Got the camera zoomed in and uh, make sure I don't have too many shadows on my paper here, which I'm my own lighting director and my own uh, camera director, so we'll have to see if that uh, works to minimize the shadows. Okay, um, let's get going here on this thing. Um, I'm going to start out by doing a little wetting of the paper in some areas at the top. Um, so I'll start with one of these uh, large uh, medium sizes. I guess it's about an inch and a half. And uh, I'm just going to get some clear water. And uh, we're going to just sort of wet the top of this paper here. Um, as you know, I paint vertically, which is typically a no-no for watercolor artists. I don't know anybody that paints complete vertically. Maybe there are some, I don't know. But uh, anyway, you get a lot of runs and uh, that kind of causes some problems. But it also inter introduces some... Uh, challenges in controlling the water. It also introduces some challenges in uh, uh, giving you some nice effects that you may not otherwise get. So uh, let's see if I can keep that from running down too much. Let it get a little bit wet. Again, 300 pound paper takes, holds a lot of water and it will hold it for a long time. So uh, um, 
I don't want to uh, take a long time to wet this, but it uh, certainly hopefully will hold this water for quite a while. Let me tap it down here. All right. Um, so the color of this sky, this has a very interesting sky. It's a, I'm going to make it probably just a little more um, lavender than it is, but uh, we'll see what it looks like. Uh, it's got a lot of gray in it. Blue even has a little bit of yellow in it. Typically a winter sky, you might find it to be a, a little bit uh, gray or um, bluish gray maybe. Let's see what happens here. Let's try a little bit of this. See how it runs down very nicely and you just touch it. I'm not, I'm not painting big brush strokes here. I'm just sort of hitting it with some water and letting it run. Uh, actually changes colors a little bit over to the left side we get a little more red in it over here something like that come back over here and just sort of this bristle brush lets you take these makes these edges very soft you see what that does it just sort of Smooth that all out. I lost some of the color in there, of course, which is one of the difficulties you might have with a bristle brush when you try to brush it over. I'm going to come back and put some neutral tint on top of that now and see if I can get a little darker up here. Just lay in some dark color there. Because it's wet, it's going to run and going to make some interesting looking colors on this paper. If I were painting flat and had the, can the paper loose, I could pick it up and turn it so that it would uh, actually make these colors run in other directions. You get more horizontal running if you do that. You may want to try that. You may be painting flat instead of vertically. Um, just trying to make a nice, interesting, uh, soft sky. I may come back and put a little more dark in there even yet. It could be a little darker up here maybe. There we go and just let it sort of run. All right, now, when it starts pooling up like this, you can always take a dry brush and just sort of pick it up. What I'm leaving room for here is some mountains in the distance there. Someone had asked me about painting snow on the mountains and I'll get into that a little bit here today. Okay, very small sky, not a lot of sky here. Dry out the brush, pick up some of this hanging down here. All right. Okay. Hair dryer. I'm going to dry this now so that it, I get a nice crisp edge on that. Turn the microphone off. Okay, should be fairly dry, at least at this bottom edge is where I want it the driest. Check it with the back of your hand, not the front of your hand. 
you have less oils on the back of your hand and if it feels warm to you um, or temp room temperature is probably dry if it feels cool it's still a little wet feels a little cool to me <clears throat> it is still a little wet but I'm going to go ahead in the interest of moving along here see if we can keep this thing uh, going I don't want to bore you um, I'm going to get my one inch synthetic brush try to drop that brush all right let's see if we can do something with these mountains now we're going to go back here and pick up some of this uh, gray color a little bit of blue the mountains have to be darker than the uh, than the sky behind them or you won't see them <clears throat> so <clears throat> the darker you make your sky the more you got to do something to make the mountains show up so i'm picking a little burnt sienna a little ultra tint and a little bit of ultramarine blue and made this sort of a brownish gray color Let's see what happens back here I'm give it a dry brush like this and you can leave areas that may have snow on them uh, and this sort of this dry brush helps tell that story back here as you pull down very light very light pick up maybe a little more blue change the color a little bit I don't want to have everything the same color Over here, we're going to have some more mountains that are going to be hidden by the trees, but I want to sort of put in a few more peaks over here. A little snow on top. So it's fairly simple, fairly fast. So we're leaving some rough areas here. So it'll give us a interesting base. Hope that's coming across on our video okay. Okay, let's see here. Let's change the color a little bit, get a little more of this brown in there maybe. Sort of change the color a little bit. One inch brush, just a big old flat brush. Okay, so you can just sort of use a lot of dry brush here, pick up some more areas that might have snow in them back there. All right, so we have a nice, interesting Montana-type mountain range. I'm not sure where this is. I think it's somewhere along the Bitterroot Valley, Bitterroot Mountains, I believe, if I remember. Been in this area many times and hiked into some of those mountains and had uh, not hiked very far but not hiked back in there nevertheless um, you can hike for 20 miles back into those mountains if you want but uh, at my age in life I'm not interested in such hikes all right so now we're going to start with some some trees in the background <clears throat> I'll pick up some ultra blue maybe a little of this uh, ultraviolet here see how quickly these colors come back to life they're just uh, the, the paints are just sticky moist 
and they've been in this pallet for weeks and weeks and they haven't done anything to them but just put some water on them. Um, that might be a little bit too... Let me gray that down a little bit. Gray that down with putting some uh, burnt sienna in it. Getting a mixture of some blues and some gray. So there's just a thousand trees back in here. This is a huge forest back here. So I'm just sort of touching this brush, moving it across, changing the color, picking up some other colors. Okay. Mixture of blues, mixtures of violet, and burnt sienna. So I'm trying to represent a lot of snow at the base of this, as you might have guessed. Let's see if we can change the color just a little more by putting in uh, maybe a little of this still to green brown. That'll bring out a darker brown and a dark, darker gray. Let's see what happens here. I want to put in some green as well. I'm going to come back and maybe put in some evergreen color over this, but right now let me just lay in these, this, these, all these trees here in the background distance. Pick a change of color. And we can go back and put some dark over that to uh, add some contrast <clears throat> in some areas. You gotta let it dry partially before you do that, otherwise you end up with it all blurring together and looking like one big bunch of trees. We're just kind of walking our way across here. This actually, the trees get actually larger here because this bank actually comes toward you. So I want to show some um, perspective by making this come down a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. Um, and uh, then we have some shrub brush that's in here. Uh, let me see if I can pick up a little of this sap green and see if I can get a little more of an olive color back in there in some of these areas. Start picking up some things that look like evergreens in there that have not uh, changed their color for the winter. Put a few over here, balance it out, don't leave just one color in one place, move it around. Okay, back to some blues and browns. I'm going to put in a little background here and then come back over it with some other trees in front, but uh, I'll get a little bit of a base back here. You can always take the brush and sort of flick up and give yourself a Interesting, if you have your brush with the right amount of water in it, you get a nice uh, base on there. Okay, let's see here. Blue's standing out a little bit too much. Okay.
let's just sort of lighten this up over here and make it sort of something like that over here let's come back and put a little bit of dark base under some of these A lot of trees in the distance. Don't want to have too many distractions. I don't want to have too much white showing through there. Uh, but I do want to have it look like a huge stand of trees off, way off in the distance. Okay. So we can start picking up some more reds in here. We got a little uh, red in this sap green. We'll get an interesting green gray. How do I know that? Red and green make gray. Any complementary color on the color wheel will give you a gray. It will give you a gray that's either to one side or the other. It can be either green or red. In this case, I'm uh, just sort of making some... I'm going to put in some uh, more bushes down here. Leave a little area back there with some snow in it. These are bushes that have uh, sort of changed their color for the winter. They're sort of reddish color and uh, a little bit darker. These are what's behind it. See what's behind it? And then I can just flick up some more of these bushes here in the foreground and all of a sudden you see more depth. I have sky, I have clouds, I have mountains with snow on them, then I have a row of trees in the distance, then I'm coming forward with some other things that look like trees in here and adding another layer makes it always look like you have more depth. So these are just things that are growing out of the snow. The water is back here. We're gonna, the water comes like this and comes down. So we're going to uh, work on that a little bit later. I just want to keep filling this in over here. I can probably do this faster, but um, I want to make sure I get a nice set of colors in here. I don't want it to be totally grayed off and Red and green make gray. here a little more. So these nylon brushes, you can get some nice looking pine trees by just letting the bristles get a little bit wider and just sort of flicking your brush to the right. And all of a sudden you have some very interesting looking. So this is a lot of snow, a little bit of grasses peeking through. All coming down to this river's edge, which has a, a lot of snow. This is, I'm going to try to leave this paper all white here and bring this uh, area here back. Bring it together. Um, with a lot more bushes in the foreground. 
And as we're coming forward, we have to get a little bit darker each time. Um, so let's see, this is the base here. All right, so I'm going to come in here and just start putting in some some more trees that have some reddishness to them. They come down to here and sort of they do overlap in some areas, but let's see if we can keep a rough edge at the bottom. It's a little bit different than the photo I started with, but hey, we can't copy photos exactly. That's not a, a good thing to do. into here like this. We've got a peninsula. Show you a little trick. This little uh, fan brush, or not fan brush, but this bristle brush has some very unique capabilities when I use it for making some of these um, bushes that are on the ground. You can kind of Get a very get closer. I'm going to start using something like this. Now, I'll see if I can do it right here. So, same idea, except the bristle bristles are a lot broader. And there's a lot more of them, uh, and they have each each one becomes sort of like a paintbrush. So, as you try to use those bristles and try to flick in some grasses, um, it's like 150 little paint brushes there on the end of your brush. The synthetic ones tend to blend together and they'll make these nice blended areas, but the bristle will leave some very nice, very nice looking uh, weeds and and I can just sort of go along the bottom of this area here and leave a little bit darker color. Change the color. I'm just getting to one note here. Okay, and then over here we're going to bring up some more. So I got almost see snow here and back in there, and then the river is going to be running below here. So um, let's sort of see if I can do that. Make this get the top of this. I'm going to put a little more red in there. These things are sort of hope I don't run it. <laughs> All right, stop, step back. Gotta step back and look. Okay. Yeah, I want it to look like it's coming this way, so hopefully that's what we're getting there. Uh, let's see, start graying this down as we move back toward the back. I want to gray these down a little bit more. So I'm going to add some blue to my browns. I haven't washed out my brushes too much here. Over here we've got some more similar, similar strokes to what I was able to get with that nylon brush, but this uh, This um, uh, bristle brush has uh, a lot more brushes in it, if you will. Sort of softening these edges so it doesn't look like it's stuck on there. I have a little bit of gray, grayish color. Snow is going to be a little bit gray in some areas, a little bit blue maybe over this way. 
So this is going to be all water going back here. I'm going to come back over that in a little bit and uh, hit it. I just want to touch in some shadows, if you will. Snow. Okay, they're getting smaller. I'm trying to make this go back that way, make it go, whole thing go this way. That gives you the illusion that you're looking up a river this way. So, hopefully that's the you're seeing. More darks in here. I want this to be too mechanical. I mean, a few greens. We don't have many greens in here, so let's put a, a little bit of that sap green. Come back over and put a few more things that look like there might be some little evergreen bushes and stuff going in on here. And the bottom, you don't want the bottom to be hard. You want it to be generally soft in most of these situations. But where the grass comes out of the snow, like here, you want that to be a hard edge. Because that tell, helps tell the story that that's kind of growing out of the snow. Now, I might come back and put a little shadow there in a minute or two, but basically that's the message I want you to get out of that. Um, there's a bunch of trees that actually go up here. Um, they sort of hang above this whole area. Um, I'm going to see if I want to use I'll pick up a round brush here and see what happens here. This round brush, this is a number eight round. And I'm going to see if I can get enough dry, dry brush here to uh, make some trees that are, this area is now nice and dry so I can come back and sort of start putting in some, some trees up here that are sort of sticking up over everything behind it. And as I come down, you're going to notice the values are getting almost identical here. So what do you do? You have to make what's in front look darker, so I'm going to bring up some more darker. Just taking this Round the brush, I'm just painting with the edge of it. To give myself some more trees look like dark evergreens sort of sitting in here. And this this uh, 300 pound paper has such a nice tooth that it just pulls off little bits of that and it just sort of leaves them with a very nice feathery if I push down real hard you'll get a glob like that it covers fills in all of the all of the paper indentations but I'm not doing that I'm sort of mixing it up I'm putting it hard in some areas pushing hard in some areas I'll put a little trunk in there of some sort even make some other things that look like trees here that are not really alive anymore. They're not, maybe they're alive, but they're they've gone dormant. Okay. So by just using the side of this brush, picking up these colors that I have, keeping a fairly dry brush, there's not a lot of water in there, it's mostly paint, and just sort of Tapping it over the top here, I'm getting some very interesting little light airy trees out here. And I'm making them bigger than the mountains behind them because I'm using perspective, which makes the things in front uh, look taller than what's behind them. It gives you more distance in the, in the uh, painting. Okay, so I'm sort of making those come down. I want these to be a little higher over here on the left, so it gives you this whole feeling of everything going back in the distance. 
It's all optical illusion, folks. That's what a lot of this is. Perspective, everything about perspective is helping do optical illusions. When you're trying to make something that's two-dimensional look three-dimensional, it's got to be all optical illusion. Like a magician. Uh, let's put a few more in here, not too many. So I'm just sort of topping off this, some of these areas and give me some more that loose light, lightness that I like. Okay, over here, let's see if we can put a little more similar <coughs> type stuff here maybe. I'll finish this in, make a sort of make it connect in some areas. We got a lot of bushes and stuff sitting over here. Because that's dry now, I have paper that's dry. I'm doing wet on dry, but I'm just using the side of this brush <clears throat> in such a way that it not painting with the tip. I'm not pushing down hard and I don't have a lot of water. I'm just sort of doing a side stroke here. There's a lot of water there. You can see what it did. As I blot out just a little water now, I get a lot. A lot. Okay, so we're getting some nice fluffiness there. Get down over here. More bushes. There's even some bushes in over here as I look at it now a little closer. Pick up some of these colors, get some grays. This bank kind of comes back here and connects. Okay. All right. Take a little bit of uh, sort of a bluish gray color. Let's see if we can blend some of that together here. Don't want it to be too distinct. Okay. How are we doing, folks? Okay. Looking pretty good. Looks like a nice set of mountains, a wide panorama. Um, by the snow here, we've got, where's the bank? This is the bank. I'm going to just make myself some little dark areas here to make, make me keep track of where this bank is for this water here. It goes back this way and comes back and then it comes back out here. Sort of a snowy area right there. Um, it kind of goes back. So I'm just sort of outlining now kind of where I want this water edge to be. Like that. There's another area that comes out this way. This is all sort of the front side of the bank, if you will. Comes out here and comes all the way down there. Now. If I paint around that, you'll see the you'll see the water, but I won't have I will not have painted the water. Um, so this is all snow. I want to leave this all snow. I've got some. This comes back, and there's a little bit of uh, grassy dead grass or something there. Uh, let's see what I can do here with this. Comes back in there. So now. I'm going to negatively paint same thing over here. Same thing on the other side coming back this way. Now 
know, why am I making the strokes go that way? That's the way the land goes. The land goes like this, so I'm kind of making the brush strokes go that way. The land goes like this over here, that's why I'm making the strokes go this way. It's all part of the illusion process that you're seeing here. That's uh, helping to make that look like it's a little bit of snow, a little bit of dirt along the bank. Um, and um, not much painting really. A tree I'm going to put in here. That tree wasn't in the original photograph, but I'm going to stick one in there. To, there was a tree there. It was just off of the outside of the view of the camera. Save some room in there for it. Okay. Step back. Take a look. Okay, now all of this water is going to be, I'm going to make it wet and I'm going to show you how the I've done that before actually with the uh, many times I put water in my paintings and uh, there's some interesting secrets to it and I'm going to give you the, some of those secrets my brush nice and cleaned out here I got a lot of brown in there um, so I'm going to wet this area that's going to be water here Let's paint in some clear water. Picking up, still picking up a little of that brown. do is I'm going to make the reflections in the water and I'm going to use some some of my uh, <clears throat> neutral tint in blue and try to get a fairly dark put some that's uh, violet in there as well violet neutral tint Let's see if we can get a little reflection even maybe a little bit of that red so I can have a little bit of reflection from those clouds but while that's still wet, it's not uh, very dry yet. I don't want it to be dry, but what I want it to be is I want to be able to take my <clears throat> brush and with the colors in it that I want to make reflections, do this, just pull down. Change the color, get something a little darker in some areas. Go back and pick up maybe some of these browns a little bit. Actually, to be a little more accurate, we could put in just a few tree trunks maybe. Some of these areas. Down here, something like that. Then come back and finish off our really dark, dark brown up here next to the bank. Let it bleed down.
I'm wiping out some of my tree trunks. Um, get some more dark. Make it a little darker in these areas. Some of these areas are darker. This area starts turning more reddish brown now as we come down to the left, get some more red, red and brown, sort of over here maybe pick up a little of that reddish color see it's these vertical strokes that tell you that's calm water another Okay, we want to put in just a few, <clears throat> well that's kind of drying off, put in a few of these. Could wait till that dries a little bit more probably, but Kind of in a, I don't know why I'm in a hurry. Plenty of time here. Um, let's see if I can maybe soften this edge down here a little bit. As it bleeds, pull it up on it, pull it together. water dried out down here, the paper dried out rather, before I got all that paint on there. All right, go back and pick up a little, this ultra blue, and I want to sort of model the snow, do a little modeling in here, put a, just some Don't want this to be all just pure white. So we'll soften some of it off, leave some hard edge in there. Go back, put a little more over here maybe. Soften it off. Okay. I think I really need some more dark. It's not nearly dark enough at the uh, edge of this snow. So I'm going to come back here and see if I can pop in a few more really darks here. Get a little bit of a variation going. Okay, so now I'm getting this about three levels of colors here. Three values, I should say, not colors, values. Okay. Soften those top edges a little bit. <clears throat> Over here we've got some other, I'm going to put a little more of that bluish color in there. And 
and over here we've got some on the front edge of this water we do have some I don't want to make it that color I want to make it um, sort of bluish gray that's black almost take just a little of the colors here and see if I can sort of model the front of the edge of the uh, bank here so it looks like you've got some snow there get some water in it sort of give it this sort of look not a lot of paint soften it up put some more water on there so don't want to have this big area of white here with nothing going on if you've heard me talk before about making sure you have covered your paper or your canvas so that you make sure you tell the tell some sort of a story about every two inches in here so if you Okay, come a little more on the other side over here maybe, get, get it some, get some water and make it fairly wet, too dark, clear water, get my, I'm going to get my bristle brush and see if I can, the bristle brush and clear water and kind of blot it just a little bit, but you can take something like this and just sort of blend it very nicely so that it kind of all goes together. That's a little better, maybe. A lot of dirt around here, even though there's snow around. I'm going to come back and put this tree in now. And here, I'm going to lay a big old dark tree right over there. Make it go up to the sky. And we'll probably be done. See these over here. Maybe I can... Once that's dry, you can even come back with a bristle brush and loosen up the paint. If you got Fabri good, good paper like Fabriano, you can loosen that up and it will re-blend and give you some nice, very nice there. Okay, let's see, in this tree, I'm gonna get us some dark browns and dark, give it a, a lot of paint, a little bit of water. But we're gonna start here and just sort of, see, we've got snow on the left, so I'm gonna, Start on the right and just sort of run up this way. Something like that. Right off the top. Little base on there, come back and make some more darks. This has got to be dark on everything, everything around it, or it's not going to show up. Something like that. Over here we've got some snow. Go back and put a little more change of colors in some of these areas. 
give it a couple knots sticking out like we got a tree branch broken off. Probably need a, a thinner brush. I'll go get my little uh, script liner here and see if I can put some fine tuning on that thing. Get a lot of water in here, put a few People say they can't draw a straight line. You see that line is not straight. It's jiggled and jagged. That's what you need. You don't need, unless you're drawing an architectural building, you don't need a lot of straight lines. Things in nature are not necessarily straight. One more here and do something like this. Okay, maybe a few more down here to sort of give it a little more interest. I'm, as I move the brush, I'm lifting up, which is what gives you that nice little point. I've watched artists do this for years and realize it wasn't the wasn't just a big fat brush stroke, but it's that lifting up at the end like this. It gives you those nice looking branches and wiggling your hand a little bit. Let's see, let's put a couple more things down here that look like they're kind of hung over. Maybe something's broken off. I don't know. All right, step back and see what that thing needs. Mm -hmm. Probably, I think the thing that I wanted, I think there was like a log of some sort laying here. I'm going to wrap this up, folks. I'm about done. I just want to see if I could make something look like a log that was sort of laying in here in the snow. Just a piece of wood that's maybe fallen off of this tree or off of another tree. Something like that laying there and just sort of hanging out in the snow, getting sort of buried in the snow. Now, how do I make that look like a log? Well, as opposed to a rock, I'll come back here, maybe put a couple of little things on it like this that look like there's some it was alive at one time. All right, maybe we got some other things growing out of the ground down here that's kind of around the base of this tree, which would not be unusual. Come back and sort of make those a little more abstract. I don't want them to be too obvious over there. Um, another area we might throw in a few things to make it look like we got some bank along here. Flick a few of those in there with this brush. Helps define that bank a little better. Maybe this something down here the same. All right. I could keep messing with this. I'm sure I would bore you to death if you're not bored already. Um, okay, I think I'm going to stop and say, I'll zoom, zoom my camera back here and say, 
thank you once again for watching. I hope you enjoy this painting. I hope you give it a try. And uh, have any questions or comments, leave them below in the video. And uh, I'll try to answer them. Also, my live oil painting class is coming up this Wednesday, the 17th of February. So if you haven't registered and signed up for that, uh, there will be a link in the uh, video below this as well. Uh, you can always go to my website and find out about classes and workshops and there are places to uh, link to to uh, get your registration in for the live painting classes. And um, with that, I think I will say thank you for watching. Until I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye.